Fatality. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to UFO Buster Radio. This is episode number uh, 368, I believe. I, I mean, I, I just put this stuff up there. I don't even remember. Uh, this is a Thursday freak out with Manny Moonraker, of course. And uh, we have a special guest today. It's not going to be the normal uh, Thursday night freak out. Uh, we have on our line right now uh, from the uh, up and coming and uh, soon to be extremely popular podcast, Alt Pop Repeat. We have uh, Marie and Chrissy with us. Uh, guys, welcome aboard. Hey. Hey, thanks, thanks for, having for having us. us. We're excited. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I am so glad you guys uh, made it on board, and uh, let me tell you, uh, I almost want to give kind of like a the background of how we did this, kind of, because it was kind of yeah, weird yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, no, go for it, yeah, and, and we'll we'll jump in on that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm pretty sure you will. So, uh, what was it like, uh, last November, last December, I got an email, and... Um, yeah. and I had received like a lot of emails, and I kind of ran this uh, by... One of my friends, Adam Baum, I say, Adam, look at this. Should I have uh, these folks on on the show? And then I'm like, look, they actually talked to someone in ufology, and we'll talk about who that is later on. And I was like, but I, I feel like I feel like a like a two dollar hooker that's being uh, <laughs> sold off for like twenty five cents. And no, hot. <laughs> but it wasn't you guys. No, it wasn't you guys. Uh, I just had a lot of those kind of messages come through. I was like, they don't know the podcast. I don't want to do it. But... And he's like, hey, do it. I'm like, I don't know. He's like, do it. So I said, well, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to answer it on the podcast. And if they're really interested, they will hear it. And apparently you guys did. Oh, we heard it. We heard it. We so did. I called Marie. Yeah, I called Marie and I was like, we're getting a podcast war. I was like, let's go. And so from there, it kind of started that way. And then we sent you a note back and we we're like, yeah, we'd love to take up the challenge and be on the podcast and, you know, and talk about UFOs and, and everything else. Paranormal, I mean, all those great really, things. Really, is it? It's like, it's not so much a challenge so much as it was an invitation to yeah. come and talk about UFOs and paranormal and. Yeah just kind of bridge that gap because, I mean, there's experiences and stories that we're experiencing in Canada within those worlds. I'm always curious to whether or not these are the same hot topics you guys are talking about in the States. So, I mean, here's, it's a fun cross, cross-cultural, I don't know what you want to say, a cross-cultural exchange, if you will. Yeah, and we're all, you know, and we're, we're pro-UFO, so we're pro-ufology. So in, in context of talking to you and talking to other people in the same sphere it just makes sense well that's true and uh, like I always tell the folks on here on the podcast and that is that uh, uh, basically things like UFO and the paranormal are are absolutely they're universal right yes everyone's going through these things yeah everybody has a story or or knows somebody who has a story and they love to talk about the story well i think more and now it's become more acceptable to talk about ufo stories i'm not sure about paranormal but people share that stuff together and you know i think marie and i talk about we should start normalizing it because a lot of people love to chat about it because it's the unknown so yeah. why not and yeah and people like yourself and, and other people that are doing things like this are shedding light on those mysteries so it's it's nice to see yeah, but I mean, there's like a total watershed moment. Like you take a look we're, when we're getting ready for our first episode um, and we're taking a look at where the conversation came from prior to 1989, a lot of people just did not agree that we were we were sharing this universe with other beings. They were just like, yeah, that's like sci-fi. Like that's something. And it was kind of isolated to a few pockets of people. But then after that moment, then it broke into the mainstream and people started talking about it. And after that point, I know in Canada, um, our UFO research, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. I'd have to look at that. Yeah, MUFON. Where they were, well, MUFON in the States as well, too. Yeah. Uh, no, specifically, it was, there's a Canadian uh, group that tracks UFO sightings and reports within Canada. And after 1989, it just exponentially grew and grew and grew and grew as news that there was other people in, in that Area 51 actually legitimately did exist. So it's kind of like this crazy, I just think it's really fascinating how that shift happened. And then now, obviously, I mean, if you go down the street and you ask anybody, hey, do you think we're alone in this universe? Who's going to say, oh, oh yeah, we are. Like, I just think if someone said that yeah. to me, I just look at them thinking, oh, are you crazy? Are you just missing the news? 
these days. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're not. Uh, I, I guess a lot of those folks are not open minded. But uh, let me uh, let me read something I found online about the, the two of you uh, from <laughs> Socialite Life. Yeah, for sure. So uh, and we'll start Oh Pop Repeat. Toronto-based live streaming vanguards Marie and Chrissy, owners of public relations <clears throat> agency Vocab Communications, dive into pop culture trends and counterculture worlds and chat along with guests on how both perceptions are so closely synced. So synced. And so really that's uh, almost what we're talking about here with UFOs, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like for us, like UFOs, well, for myself personally, UFOs have been a part of my my entire life, my childhood. My dad loves UFO, UFOs. He's a ufologist in that form. You know, so I came into my life at a really young age and, you know, started to grow with it. And then as I was, you know, embedding myself into the community and meeting people and, and learning more about it and becoming part of like this activist community, you would call it. Then I started noticing how mainstream was picking up more and more and more and more. And, and every day now it's like, well, you can just talk about UFOs and people are like, yeah, I, I believe it. Like it's embedded into the mainstream now. And I think no ufologist would ever thought that would have happened before. So I know my dad and everyone else I know is just extremely happy that we're finally at this point rather than people calling everybody lunatics. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it's nice to see that now. It's nice to see that we've we've made the shift. So who knows what's going to happen next? That's the that's the question. So, uh, a handshake. Uh, go on, go on. Sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, so here's the question. So um, so you guys are together, I guess, co-owners of uh, Vocab Communications, right? No, no, we are not actually. No. Vocab is Chrissy's. Chrissy is the the publicist extraordinaire. Um, and the project that we work on together is we work on on the podcast together. But oh, I'm a okay. digital marketer in my daytime. I mean, yeah. on occasion, I will I will wax philosophical and provide some, you know, illuminating advice on clients and projects to Chrissy uh, as far as the social media is concerned. But outside of that, it's um, we're very much separate. Yeah, our baby together is Alt Pop Repeat, our podcast. And that's how, you know, Marie and I knew, we've known each other for years within our, you know, inner circle and, and friends, but we really became closer during the past like year and a half, I would say. And then we brainstormed, created Alt Pop Repeat, and then we launched it earlier this January. And it's it's done fairly well. And, you know, it's a baby of ours and it's like really a labor of love. So, you know, like doing this is, you do it because you really love it. You know, you yeah. don't do it on the side because it's going to make you thousands, millions of dollars. You know, maybe hopefully one day all of us get that. But you really do it because you, you love the craft. So how did you guys, uh, I guess, um, come up with the idea for the podcast? And um, uh, how do you figure each one of you plays into that conversation? Well, we we met up one night. We had a long overdue catch up from like years we hadn't seen each other and then we're we just were like let's catch up so we met up we sat down and we just started talking and I started sharing some of the experiences I had where I had an opportunity to go and do ayahuasca and I was talking about these really bizarre experiences that I was having in that space where um and from that I was like you know I I'm pretty sure that this is maybe this is something that might make you feel uncomfortable and I'm really sorry for that but I'm just really I wanted to share all this insanity this this stuff that makes me sound insane saying it right. and Chrissy just looks at me she's like you're not crazy she's like you're not she's like this is fantastic she, and then Chrissy said I am a ufologist and at that moment I was like this is this is a whole other side to you and now we can have these conversations Next thing I know, Chrissy called me up and said, do you want to work on a podcast? And the rest is history as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Isn't it our, funny? Yeah. How you're it like, is. You sit there and you're like, oh, shit, do I, can I really tell this person this? Yeah. 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 We've, and there's a lot of people, though, that we've noticed 
that we've been talking to, if they're, you know, an influencer or whoever they might be, um, they have similar experiences, you know, or they, they want to talk about these things. They want to push it forward or they have their own feelings around it. So the idea and just in general from counterculture, you know, to pop culture, to subculture, the idea is that when a guest comes on, you know, we want to make them comfortable. We want to have this as an open conversation. So there's no judgment and we just table everything and we talk about it together. And that's really where, you know, Marie and I, the first time we went down to do some interviews with different, um, different guests, that's really the, the environment that we wanted to create it. And we still want to create that going forward. You know, it's, it's nice to be able to have these conversations and people talk about this more than I think than, than people would imagine, to be honest. Yeah, I think I they do. Yeah. So do you think that yeah. UFOs are, it's kind of moving into the pop side of the culture balance? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. If it, with, with all, yeah, with all the docs that are coming out and, you know, ancient aliens, I would say is really one of the catalysts that started that as well, too. But there's a lot of TV shows that are around, you know, ufology, but not even that, like Close Encounters. Like, come on, guys, like Steven Spielberg, like he really brought it in then. Uh, But I would say mainstream right now is Ancient Aliens really, really pushed it through because it's such a popular show. Yeah. And then, I mean, it came right up to area, Raid Area 51 and turning into turning into a festival. So like it's. It's everyone is trying to look. I, I think we have a lot to thank to uh, the internet, also making memes out of people off of Ancient Aliens. Action Bronson watching Ancient Aliens with his friends, and that's being broadcasted on Vice. And you've got communities of people trying to come together, and they just want to, you know, they want to talk about things that right. maybe they've always been interested in, but they just never had an opportunity to. But we can do it now because we can all kind of find each other on the internet. So why not? Let's just get it out there. So, and then also like E.T., hello. I mean, it was, yeah. <laughs> it was like one of the first movies I ever watched as a child was E.T. And I'm, so one of the first things I'm learning is that, you know, aliens are not so scary and they're probably botanists. So it's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got a couple of questions for you guys. Yeah, for sure. So the first one's for Marie. Ready? Yes. RuPaul. Yeah. What's up with RuPaul? <laughs> I love that was a question. <laughs> RuPaul is, um, so whenever I, I grew up in a small town in Canada on the East Coast on, in a province called Prince Edward Island, tiny, tiny town. And, and I was, I just didn't feel like I belonged because I'm, I'm half Arabic and I'm half British and I'm a first generation Canadian and my family's traditions were very different than everybody else's. And it was a predominantly white community. Um, and I remember just going through this period and feeling like no one really got me. And I saw RuPaul, RuPaul, supermodel of the world, you know, that album is you better work supermodel, work it girl. Mm-hmm. And it came out. And I was like, who is this? And I didn't know that at the time that RuPaul was a drag queen. I just saw this <laughs> larger than life, larger than life woman that was like curvy and just ethnic and living louder than life and just not giving a shit about anybody sad to say about them. And I was just, I just gravitated towards it. And so from that moment on, I was like, you know what? I don't need people. And that's, that was it. I just learned something about myself. I didn't need people to validate me if I wanted to wear um, shorts and a t-shirt, wear shorts and a t-shirt. If I want to go clomping down click street in a pair of high heels and a uh, gold lemme dress and talk about aliens and ghosts and whatever else, then fuck it. I'm going to go and do it. Yeah. And I kind of got that from RuPaul. So that's, that's really just it. I just learned a lot about RuPaul and RuPaul made me learn a lot about myself and just accept who I am and the, the craziness that and the crazy interests that I have. And I just don't feel ashamed for it. And that's the best thing. Kind of made me a bitch in high school. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, at the same time, I'm like, you know what? You love love me or leave me. I, I'm here to stay. And and I'm not going to compromise myself for anybody. And, and then ultimately, it also helps whenever we're on the show. And Chrissy and I end up having these really great conversations. And because I'm not afraid to say what I think, I'll have to through Paul to thank for that. So that's it. My love for Paul. <laughs> there you go. And actually, we have uh, folks in the live chat. We have Pucky, uh, Dre, Greenman, and uh, Dre 
usually listens uh, with his wife at the same time. Uh, they listen right. together until she falls asleep. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, apparently she did say uh, girl power, women power. Nice. Uh, she's cheering you guys yeah. on, so that's fantastic. So, you All know, right. my next question is going to go to Chrissy Joe Rogan. Oh, I love Joe. I think I have a crush on Joe. That's the, that's the I ongoing joke. kind of felt that joke. from reading Thanks. this um, article. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do, I do. I think he's a wonderful human being. I always joke around saying, like, Joe Rogan is, like, he's kind of like the new everyday man. That's what I feel because he does all of these things. He just doesn't do one. He does multiple things. Right. So I think he's becoming, like, the new average Joe, like, less the pun. But, you know, I really do. And I just love his work. I love everything he does. He, Yeah, I know he's a little bit skeptical when it comes to UFOs, but – you know that whole interview with Bob Lazar really changed the way he he thinks about it and 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 understands UFO, UFOs and and what really happened during that time, um, and I believe that he really believes uh, him as well. So yeah, Joe's just he's fantastic. We really want him on the show. You know we're gunning we're for that. We're working up so to it. We're working. Kind of like the subtext. That one Sub- through. Yeah. yeah, the subtext yeah. of the show is like road to road to Joe. <laughs> road, yeah, road to, to Joe. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, and the thing is, like, he does so many things, like, and the man is always busy, and he really is a pioneer for the podcasting world. So, let alone on that, you know, I, I for sure we'd we'd have to try and get him on at least try. Um, but I watch him all the time. You know, when I I watch him on YouTube, actually, I don't always listen to him when I'm driving and stuff like that. I watch a lot of his videos on YouTube uh, because I like to see the interaction that he has with his guests. So, go yeah. Joe. <laughs> Listen, uh, anyone that serves their guests alcohol is yeah, is okay in my book. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. And he has Absolutely. he he yeah. does so. I love the fact that he talks about all the craziest topics in the world. It could be you know a, a normal topic. It could be it could be anything, and he will dive deep in it and really pick it apart with his guests. And I like the fact that his guests want to join him on those conversations and that journey as well too. And you see them create this bond. You, you see them thinking like, it's just, it's really great. And it's taken this long format interview. I love because it's get it's getting away from this short form. You know, you got two minutes, jump on a talk show, you know, be really campy, you know, tell us a little bit, do a little shtick, tell us about your movie and then get off. You know, I don't, it doesn't really show who the person is in talent. It doesn't really show the connection to them. Like Joe really created that. And I think because of him, people are looking for way more long format uh, interviews and stuff like that now. So go yeah, and that's, Joe. Um, it's really good because you get to really know the guests when, uh, when they're yeah. on there for that, that amount of time. Yeah, you do. You get you get to have a, a real in-depth conversation. And then, yeah. And then you get to see this other side. Like, it's real. Like, I remember watching Macaulay Culkin, and I was like, wow. I never have watched it. I think it was three hours I watched him. And I said, I'm, unless a movie, I've never watched anything to really see the way that you might interact with the, with the person rather than just, yeah, doing a five-minute interview on, you know, on a late-night TV show and then getting off. It's It's not the same. So... Yeah, I'm glad he's pioneering that for all of us because I think that's the new wave of of TV and and everything that we're going to do personally. So we have some uh, we have a yeah. question here. Uh, have either of you had either a UFO or paranormal experience? Oh my gosh! Yes. Yeah, Uh-oh. I've had I've had yeah I've had <sighs> both, but I know that. But my uh, a UF my UFO experience. Um, this is. I haven't told this one actually. I, we haven't talked I'm about the podcast. For it. Yeah, but it you know the story. But um, it is an exclusive. It's Christie's UFO <laughs> adventures <laughs> exclusive. Uh, so, oh my gosh, this must have been three years ago. I was at my parents' place in the country, and I there's this whole thing that they do about they call channelings. So you want to channel a UFO, or you want to think about it, so that you know okay. where you are. In, right in the world and then you kind of like project yourself out into the, the outer cosmos idea and that's supposed to be something that is looking to connect with them you know as a, as a UFO geek over here so I decided I came out of uh, I was outside uh, with it was my boyfriend at the time but my ex now unfortunately but <laughs> I was with him at the time and we were I was we were talking about UFOs before because we're both geeks in it and so at that point I he went to go take a pee <laughs> and I was like you know what and I sat down and I was like I'm gonna do this channeling exercise because I've never done it before and uh I looked up 
And I'm like, what the hell is that? And this has been like, this is like a couple minutes, you know, like he's went off in the forest to go take a pee and then came back. And I look up and I'm like, what the hell is that? So something pops out of the sky and I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I look at it and I'm like, no way, no way. And then it does it, it moves and it does it again. And I'm like, I'm like, Mikey, get over here. I'm like, get over here. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, get over here. And he's like, what? I'm like, look. And he's like, what? I'm like, watch. So it happens again. It pops out and moves across the sky and it pops out and he goes, oh my God. He's like, I see it. And then all, so everyone's sleeping at this point. It's late at night. All of the lights in the house turn on along with all the sensor lights outside. And these Are center lights, serious? I'm dead serious. Yeah. You would have to have a, like a gazelle or some kind of animal, like a bird fly by multiple of these sensor lights outside to turn them on. And we were standing still in a spot in the dark. Like we weren't running around. We were in one spot looking at it. So everything turned on. And then, you know, I don't know why he still had a Blackberry, but he did. He had a Blackberry. <laughs> he looked at it and it was all scrambled. So I had to take the battery out and so he looked at me and I was like wow what was that and he's like what was that he's like did you not did you not notice all the lights Chrissy and I went oh my god I'm like you're right and then we both just kind of just stopped and like looked at each other and I was like that that was amazing um so it was the first time that I like that I had like that happened to me uh in a UFO I'll let Marie tell her paranormal but yeah that was um that was that was the most amazing thing for me. And, and as someone who's a ufologist, as a kid, it was like, finally, like I get to be part of this club. <laughs> that, that's, that's actually I've seen one before. So. so so was that the first one that kind of got you started to really no, dive I, into it or you had other ones? No, 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 all of them is like, that's the first one that's, that was the first thing that ever happened to me that I had a, a UFO kind of experience. But besides that, I've always loved it as a kid. My, my dad had a UFO experience when he was really young. And we, we talk a little bit about that on the podcast in the first episode. Uh, he was up north driving up with a group of friends. And long story short, he was on the highway and everybody was pulled over. And there was this craft hovering over the highway. And they put a, a scope with like, there was a gun that has a scope on it. So mm -hmm. they put it to get a better look at the UFO. And once they took out the gun and they weren't obviously weren't going to shoot at it, but the UFO must have noticed it or it felt censored it. And it just took off down the highway. So my dad took a picture of it as well too. And, and he has that at home. And that was the first thing he showed me as a little girl and it just oh, really? lit up. Yeah. And it lit up everything inside of me. Um, and then that's really, really started. I must have been like six or seven. Like I was really young, but then, yeah. And then I had my, that was experience was like, oh, it wasn't too long ago, but you know, I'm just happy to be part of that group now. So yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to the time when we get to go on a trip and we can go try and find UFOs. I mean, that's, That, that's a thing isn't it like people will go out and try and find them not my not my jam but maybe that's a cultural exchange that we have Chrissy you and I you can go take me UFO hygiene and then I'll take you haunted to place to haunted places but don't worry I'll protect you yeah, yeah. well I've been okay. yeah I've been um I've been circle chasing before in England I've been in crop circles um So I'll, Marie, I'll take you at World and Manny, you're coming with us too. Let's go <laughs> run around some crop circles in England. It was, it was a really cool experience to be part of that as well too. So there's tons yeah. of things yeah, that I'm you sure can kind great. of. Uh, I think yeah. uh, avoiding the abduction is the key thing there. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't try to think about that. Right, I don't try to think about their ears off. Yeah. I'm like, so guys, what's this? So this is the abduction. I was really expecting a whole lot more, but I mean, <laughs> like, whatever. I'm like, on a level of like, um, one to like 20, are you guys like the least popular aliens in your crew? Is There that you why go. you kidnapped me? <laughs> like, kid, I'll just go in. I'll offend them. They're like, can you just put her back, please? Take Chrissy. Leave her behind. Yeah, it's like screaming um, too. Yeah, uh, so bit, Marie, you know. you've had uh, paranormal experiences. Yeah, nothing, nothing so glamorous. I mean, I used to work in a lot of museums, and so for me, I mean, it was just that was just the way it was. 
um, I remember growing up with stories from my my parents where my great grandfather used to work in the British Museum and he was security guard in the mummy room. So he had his own little experiences from that. And I used to just be fascinated with obviously like just Egypt and ancient the ancient world. Um, so that when I so I started working in museums myself, and so I worked in this one in Summerside. And the woman who used to live in the house had recently died, but she had lived to the ripe old age of 105, and the house she had inherited from her parents and so on and so forth. Mm. So the house was incredibly old. People had lived and died in it, and but she had massed this incredible collection, so it was like a time warp. So I was working in the house late, late, late one night, and I was just doing some work because I was helping to um, accession some of some of the collection. And I was in the attic, and I remember hearing a window slam, which brought me out of the attic, and I started walking. I was like, what was that? The windows were all shut. It was late at night. There wasn't there. But one of the windows had, like, somehow unlocked itself magically and flown up against the the ceiling. And we're like, oh, that's strange. And I heard somebody downstairs, and I thought it was just one of my colleagues. So I went to walk downstairs, and I saw... I legitimately just saw a woman walk past me as I'm coming down the stairs. There was a mm. woman who just walked on past me. And I was like, wait, what was that? Because it was, she, she was a Victorian lady. She, it, none of it made any sense. And I was like, did I just see something? So I, and I, I was like, well, you know, whatever ghosts are real, they're human too, or they used to be. So I just walked into the kitchen and I remember hearing a voice sing and I went, ah, oh, this place, like this one massive paranormal experience. And then recently, sometimes like when, sometimes when the like, the clouds are hanging low, we're coming into like, I don't know, new moons and full moons. And there's a lot of things that are happening in the world, um, electromagnetically, I think. Mm-hmm. So I... Just the other night, I was telling Chrissy, I was like, I can't sleep. My Xbox just keeps turning on. I went on my phone in the middle of the night to go use it, and it just was typing messages. It was just gobbledygook. It was pulling up random websites about, like, local news. And I Uh. just – it was just bizarre. So I will get, like – I think just because I'm open to it and I'm open to having those experiences, that sometimes I seem to be, like, a bit of a beacon for ghosts. So – um that's not even half of it. I've had been, del- I've, I've delivered messages for people who have passed on and I'm like, I'm sorry. You must think I'm insane. But Wait if, a minute. if you so, just sit so with you've me got the gift day, you're saying on occasion, I wouldn't say it's a consistent thing. It's just sometimes on occasion, something will come through and I'll say, Hey, like, do you have a nickname? Is it peaches? And then they'll say, Oh yeah, that was my nickname. It was our private nickname for my, my boyfriend who had passed away and I actually had delivered a message to one of my friends um, when our mutual friend had passed away and mm-hmm. I got in a message and I reached out to her and I hadn't spoken to her in a while and I said look I've got some really crazy stuff to tell you but she's native Canadian so I know that she believes in spirits so it was easy for me to approach it with her so I said mm-hmm. look or if you're cool with this I'm going to tell you what I'm hearing and I mean it was not very glamorous it was just that hey it was, really wasn't glad I was like, hey, you know, uh, do you have a nickname? And she said, yeah, let me call you and I'm going to tell you the significance of it. And she's just in tears on the phone. So she got closer sh- that she needed from what I was able to tell her. Um, but it's still like a very, it's a strange experience to have it. And if some people think it's great whenever they can, you know, talk to ghosts or sense ghosts that are around. Um and I like to, I love to go to haunted places because I think that's fun. Like as a tourist, that's a cool thing. But on on a day-to-day level, it's really annoying. Yeah, so, from what I've heard, for, for people that first experience it, it uh, it's really scary and it can be really taxing. And to be honest, if someone came to me and says, my nickname is Peaches, I got to talk to someone, I'd be scared out of my uh, bejeebies. <laughs> you know, like, no, I don't want to talk to Peaches. <laughs> right. I've told them to fuck off many times. <laughs> I'm like, you just need to go away right now because this is not my life. I'm not Whoopi Goldberg. This is not Ghost. You need go. to go. I need, I've got some stuff to do right now, and it's not this. 
So I've had those conversations with with ghosts, and usually they're really respectful, and they'll leave you alone, surprisingly, or maybe I'm just scary. So it's one or the other. Yeah. So uh, so we know already who is the uh, the UFO geek and uh, the pair here. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna bring <laughs> we're gonna bring Chrissy up to bat next. What was or is your favorite UFO incident? Oh man. Oh my gosh. I like Barney and Betty. I like okay. that story. I think it's a lot of fun. That's probably one of my my favorite ones. I love the Phoenix Lights. I love oh, that's my the favorite, Phoenix actually. Lights. Is it? Yeah. I think it's it's such a great story. It's a mothership flying over Arizona. Like that's that's next level to me. And when you have like hundreds of people coming out and saying the exact same things. To me, that's considered evidence. It 100% is evidence. You, if you have like 100 people describing the exact same thing and have video footage and everything else, like how is that not evidence? So that's that, that I would say that's my favorite. And then, well, and obviously the Pentagon, like this new one that's come out now with um, the the um the tic tac like uh conversation i mm-hmm. love that i call it a tic tac too like i think that, that's hilarious really? when i heard that <laughs> i went really like out of all the things that we name it we name it a tic tac we got to name it a brand but um so i i laughed at that but i just love the the pentagon story now and where that's going and and finally we have this little disclosure that's coming forward uh for all of us that have been waiting for a little bit finally getting acknowledgement from the American government saying that this is real. They're not saying aliens exist, but they're saying that this footage is real and we don't know what it is. And that's a step forward for all of us. That's, you know, that, that really loves anything to do with UFOs. So yeah, what's, absolutely. What's yours is, and yours is, why do you love the Phoenix lights so much too? The Phoenix lights, uh, just because of the amount of people that witnessed it. Uh, I, I think that uh, when you have such a significant amount of people witnessing the same phenomena, you really can't turn your, your head around and say, no, nope, that's not true, like the uh, mayor attempted to do. Uh, yeah. But later on, what, he recants and says, yeah, I saw it also. So you really can't uh, turn your back on so many people and call them all crazy. I think that's really fucked up. Yeah, it is. It is really. It's just, it's like a really bad form of gaslighting. You know, you, you gaslight everybody for years, and then later on, you know, you say, hey, like, this this was real, and I feel that it was real as well, too, right. instead of squashing the subject. But I also do feel, though, that he had a lot of pressure. You know, I don't think to make fun. Like, he came in that whole UFO a- or alien getup. Yes. You didn't need to go that yes. far, like, arresting him as an alien. And I didn't think it needed to go that far or, or being, or, like, them arresting some fake alien. I don't think they needed to mock the situation, let's be honest. But I do feel that he probably had pressure higher up to say, hey, hey, you know, let's let's do some, let's talk, not talk about it. Let's try to pass the buff somewhere else. But he saw it too. Like, he, he knew it was real. So, and and the question is, is all these people, I don't know why the, 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 the story, the, the, hey, you cannot talk today. Words. <laughs> why the Phoenix Lights, geez, it's late over here. Apparently you can't talk at night. Why the Phoenix Lights story hasn't been brought up again? Because... I don't know why the news media and everybody else isn't saying, hey, you know, in 92, there was this massive sighting. Uh, can we talk about that? And why they didn't ask the the former minister, um, I always say his name wrong, Louis El, El Dorado, like why oh, they didn't Elizondo. ask him. Yeah, Elizondo, <laughs> like why they didn't ask him why CNN maybe or somebody, if I was that reporter, I would have asked that right after. I go, tell me if you know anything about Phoenix Lights and what that was about, because that's a way bigger innocent than the Tic Tac right now. So, yeah. I could go on for days, geez. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, Lewis is like we were talking about uh, before we got started. Lewis is, uh, he seems so intimidating. You know, he's got like no neck. He's really stocky. And you ask him yeah. the wrong question, and he looks like he's going to break you. Yeah. Well, he's also been taught, you know, someone who works in PR, you can tell when somebody's cherry picking or bridging. So cherry picking and bridging are tactics for politicians to use and you know people that are ceos and stuff like that to negate a, a question or a conversation mm-hmm. that they have to to answer so you see him really cherry pick around or uh, sorry bridge around certain questions that cnn has for him uh but at the end of the interview he does say though that and he alludes that it might be extraterrestrials which is unbelievable for me so i'm i, mean, I also wonder what his agenda is that's really where 
I want to follow that story. I want to follow him more, less the Navy and the Pentagon. I want to follow what he's going to do and what he's going to do next, because I can just see him being at the UFO Congress in Arizona and going to that and, you know, and doing all this tours and stuff like that. I, I'm really curious to see where he's going to go and how he's going to embed himself in it. So. Yeah, it'll be fascinating to see. Uh, my favorite of the whole story uh, besides uh, Lua Elizondo coming out, really is Commander Lieutenant Fravor, because he was on the F-18 Super Hornet that was following this Tic Tac situation, and uh, he's the one that I really want to hear from. And I and I th- I want to say both of them were on Joe Rogan's show talking about the incident, and yeah. they seem really genuine. Yeah, I believe them. Yeah, you know, and if someone if I didn't follow UFOs and I just watched that, I feel that I would I would believe them as well too. I think th- I, I don't know if, if Commander Favor has an agenda in that form. I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but it, it would be for him, and he's never seen anything else before like that. It'd be amazing. Like you hear them go, like, "Oh my god!" and like they're so shocked, and right. like that right. doesn't sound fake. The footage doesn't sound fake. I actually laughed a little bit when you can hear them going, "Like, look at it!" and like they're like so amazed. It's 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 unbelievable. But th- let's be honest here; they have so much of that footage, though. Too maybe not him, but the the american government has tons of it they just haven't this is the first one that they've really leaked so exactly eventually we'll get to the rest i'm sure uh, yeah. when we hit the real disclosure part and, and to me it's it's still a long ways off like uh, we're getting little breadcrumbs right now and but i don't see the end game in sight i, I just don't see it yet no, th- I think this is just the beginning. I think right. this is just the beginning of disclosure. And they decided to take the little D route instead of big D. And now we know that the government is having those conversations and is pushing it into mass media and into the populace now. And people are accepting it. So th- what is the, what's going to be the next, you know, are we going to have more of a big D? I don't know if the American government or anyone is going to be um, is really going to have like, Hey, this is our friend, Al, you know, he's an alien, you know, he's an (laughs) extraterrestrial. He comes from, you know, planet, you know, wherever, like he just, I don't think that's going to happen. I feel that what they might do is say, you know, that we, we have, we found some, you know, habitable planet, you know, Kepler found some habitable planet. I think there was something actually recently that they found, uh, a, a, it's very similar to Earth. I think it was like two days ago. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling that some kind of communication or wave or something like that's going to come in, and they're going to go. By the way, they're like X light, you know, light years away, but they're out there. And I think that's going to be the con- that's going to be the next step because it's not scary when you know that they're farther away. You're like, okay, they're they're not going to hurt us. You know that that's my but, that's my feeling that they might. But yeah. Don't you think that if they were going to come, if there was going to be any harm that was going to come to us that it would have happened by now i mean visitations are are not a recent thing no i don't know that's just that's my that's you know i I totally could be wrong i don't know how this is going to unfold but that's the only way that i could see them them really tempering the public you know so there isn't this mass hysteria i don't think there would be a mass hysteria as there would have been you know let's say even 30 years ago even 10 years ago i think it would be it's more accepted now but and then if they they come out and say that yeah you know aliens are real, you know we are going to have a group of people around the world that are, are going to go into mass hysteria because it, it is it's if they've never followed it or or have opened their mind to it it, it is a scary thing to first kind of step into, but once you kind of learn a little bit more and and become a little bit minded in that context you know I don't I personally don't think that there's there's anything to be scared about. Personally, yeah, so. and you have to be open minded. And the other thing too oh. is that um, the universe is much larger than we can fathom just in our heads, right? It is significant in size. But um, I also think too that um, when you take into consideration all these abduction stories, not all of them are gumdrops and jelly beans. Some of them are pretty dark. Yeah, so yeah, it's something to consider. But- yeah, uh, they're dark. And I, there's a combination of, you know, from even just like the cattle mutilation stories and things like that, you know, that's really scary. The abduction side is is is, is very petrifying in some of them. Some of them are really great. Some mm-hmm. of them are just next level. Like the Travis Walton story. Actually, I met Travis Walton. Oh, so did uh, I. Did you? Yeah. Do you go to the UFO Congress? I never asked you that. The UFO Congress? No, to- but I went to one here locally in Texas and uh, he was there. Yeah, and he's 
you should come come down to the UFO Congress. Like I, my dad and uh, you know, we geek out and go and been. I think it's been like <laughs> four or five years that we. I know. I love it. I think it's I, when I walked in, I was like, these are my people. You know, I was <laughs> you so <laughs> happy, right? And so I and so I met Travis Walton there, and I talked to him, and my dad did as well too. And when I looked at him, I he, you can tell that he has PTSD or something. Like he, you can tell that it's he's been affected by something. Yes. Um, and so for me that, that really, you know, hit the nail in the coffin for myself to go, wow, I, I need to start, I look, uh, you know, I, I listen and I'm open-minded to the abduction stories. I just don't follow them as much as I follow the, the craft stories and UFO stories and stuff like that in sites. Um, but I do dive into them at times and Travis Walton for sure is the one that, that all of us know and, and, and have followed for years. But yeah, there's something there. That's for sure. And he's disappeared for a very long time as well, and then kind of reemerged again recently. So, yeah, and I think during uh, one of the things that you can tell when, when you see him in person is even today he's still grappling with what happened to him. He still has that inner conversation of trying to rationalize what happened, and he even shared some of that uh, at the convention at the time, uh, talking yeah. about really trying to figure out why he was alive. Basically, he said he spent a lot of time trying to figure out. Why did he survive? Why did they bring him back? And uh, it's just fascinating to hear him talk through all of that with the audience. Uh, it, and he's a really nice guy too. Yeah, and and really that if you know, and if that story is true, that story should be one of the biggest stories in the entire world. Right. You know, it, it really should be. People should be talking about it more. You know, especially with this conversation with the Pentagon these other conversations really need to start coming out because there are so many UFO stories and there's so many abduction stories that are good and bad. Um, and, and honestly, like I always say this and I tell this to Marie too, you know, if you don't believe in UFOs, that's fine, but think about it. If you've got one story or one craft or one sighting is real, that's all you need. You just exactly. need one. Yeah. You just need one to change everybody's perspective so, or to, to oh, really have, wonder, yeah, pardon? We've got, we've got two that the Pentagon has released. Right, but they're not <laughs> saying, right, but they're not saying they're extraterrestrial. They're saying we don't know what it is. They're kind of alluding it's extraterrestrial, but they're not actually saying, because they can't, because they have no evidence that it's like tiny green men, they think, you know, if it's grays or whites or tall whites, like right. they, they don't know. <laughs> they can't go and say that. If, if, if the Pentagon goes, you know what, if they're all tall whites, I would, I'd cry. Like I would cry. So <laughs> I'd be so excited, but that's not going to happen at any time soon. So all they're saying is that there's something flying around. We have no idea what it is. It, there's no technology that we know of that's capable of that in human existence, um, but we're watching it. And that's as far that we've got so far. They're not saying that they're intelligently piloted. So we're almost there. We're kind of right. there. And yeah. really they couldn't because to admit that something like that exists and and really flying around at will, doing whatever it wants really kind of tells the public you have no power basically oh yeah yeah well and then you wonder like that that, there's so many questions after that about you know religion things like that political laws why have they been hiding this stuff from us for so long obviously they probably knew because we have stories like bob lazar so people start and then they're they will start questioning the government and then you question control and that's very scary for political political parties so that's why i wonder is there agenda around this whole disclosure part that's come out because never ever that i've ever seen you know i'm i'm not super old but from any research or anything i've ever done i've never seen an american or any government body say something to this degree um ever so there there there's always a connection there's always a road there's always a trail to find out what the real agenda is and i think we'll find out what that will be in the next like probably five to ten years i would imagine so yeah definitely as we it's everyone pretty much almost every country out there now that can uh, light some kind of fuel is getting up into space in some form or another. But uh, so yeah. yeah, I think that's going to be more open conversation as the years come by. But there is a question that I had for you guys, and it came from Adam Baum. Uh, back in the day when you first sent me the email about uh, coming on the podcast, and that is Jeremy Corbell. Yep. Mm-hmm. How did you guys land Jeremy Corbell on your very first episode? We I met him. 
Yeah, well, I, I met Jeremy. Right, we asked him. I met Jeremy at um, the UFO Congress when he was with Bob Lazar. Oh, so really? yeah, yeah. So I was, I was at that. The and this was, oh gosh, I don't know how long ago. He was researching him and documenting everything at that point, and Bob Lazar was speaking at the Congress. So I was there, and I already always look up all the speakers after, and I was like, who's this guy? Who's this documentary guy that's kind of new in the scene, and he's, you know, he's he's young and he's hip and you know, and he's got these really colorful documentaries that I really loved. So I went up to him and started talking to him. And then, um, yeah, and then we, we exchanged information. And then from there, I kind of disappeared. He was doing his thing, disappeared, and obviously was doing all this research with Lazar and documenting him. And then when Marie and I connected, I said to her, I was, the movie came out and I was ecstatic when the Bob Lazar story came out. Cause I was like, finally, this is the, one of the best stories ever. And, I said to Marie, do you want to, let's, let's talk to Mayor Jeremy Corbell. So I sent him an email and I had to literally pitch him everything that we wanted to do and talk about. And mm-hmm. for him to legitly know that I really love UFOs and I'm a ufologist. And then he came back to me and then I reminded him, I said, by the way, we met. And he's like, oh my God, I remember you. And I said, yeah, I met you like years ago. Um, and that's, yeah, that's how it started. But he, he's really, really lovely with people that, um, he really wants to connect with people. He really wants to talk to me. He really wants to shed light on the stories. Like he's, he's very truthful in that way and, and very wonderful. He's a very easy person to talk to. And I think Bray, you would agree with that too. He's a, he really is. He's great. I mean, he was the first, he was the first individual that I had met that had, um, uh, contact with with anybody like anybody who had I mean the fact that he's only a degree <laughs> makes us a degree away from Bob Lazar kind of blew my mind and what I really appreciated is for somebody who's just starting to learn about these things he was so gracious and kind and I wasn't sure what I was going to expect like I wasn't sure what we were going to who I was going to meet when I first met him but he was just so down to earth and just chill and just wanted to talk about this. And his his whole, his whole raison d'etre was to put together bodies of work that help people ask questions about what's happening in the world and really understand that we're not alone and that there's all that the information, the evidence is all out there. So he had a, he said in our show this line about weaponizing your curiosity. And I was like, that's exactly what it is. Because once you know, if you spend that time to learn and learn about the stories and learn about um, the evidence that we have at hand, then you don't live, you don't live in a bubble. You know what's going on. You're not, it's not like we're in the matrix. We just had the pill. Now we see the world for what it is. So why are they trying to, like, I just never understood when I came out of that, when I came out of meeting with Jeremy in our first interview, the thing I'm still asking myself of why are they so why why is it so important to keep you know area 51 and what's happening there a secret why I don't get it what is the impact if they just share that information yeah and I think really uh, uh, Chrissy might have hit it on the head just with the whole power and control thing yeah I really feel that that's, you know, why why would you, why would you, if you've had this technology, you know, since, you know, early 40s or even some of the earliest UFO sightings, like the Battle of Los Angeles and things like that, like there's so many, like 1920s, like 1910, like there, there's so many of them. And if you really did have, you know, um, an alien spaceship crash and you have two alien beings in there and you you know, and, and you take them in and you're learning and one of them is maybe still alive, they said, which is insane. Mm -hmm. And you start doing autopsies and, you know, and you're, you're learning about them and you first learn that we're connected to, to something bigger than ourselves. It would blow your mind. And also how do you tell the public that, you know, how, and especially at that time when the, especially when they even did world of the uh, war of the worlds, and that came out, and people were, were killing themselves and freaking out, thinking that a radio show was actually an abduction, and that we were, mm. you know, that right there was really that test to say they can't handle it. Exactly. So, 
<laughs> yeah, like that was the test. Yeah. And they, they tempered it and they said, we're not going to be able to do this. But then as things grow and political systems do, there is a form of control that will that will play a hand in that. You know, there's a lot of power. If this is true, there's a lot of power in understanding that we are not alone in the universe. Like that's the most power anybody would ever have. Right, so, exactly. Yeah, so – you know, I, I don't I think all of us need to know if it's true or not. We finally come to that point, but it's it's been years now that that all these questions of, you know, people have been asking, like, are we alone? What's going on? And and now with the internet and everything else, you can't hide it now. So especially when everybody's got a cell phone and can videotape everything. So Yeah, and unfortunately it's for some reason they can't because we never see any really good videos of pictures these days. Yeah, it's so funny with me, Fawn. I wonder why, you know, I wonder why that's like there. There are, and there's a lot of stories, and I, I we should say, but there's a lot of fakes too that are going in the, out, coming out as well too. There's tons of fake footage and stuff. There's probably, I would say, probably more fake footage than real footage. But yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a good point. You know, and maybe we have to ask Mufa on that. They would know better than than I would. That's for sure. Right. <laughs> yeah. So here's a here's a question. Did from their interactions with uh, Jeremy Corbell, was there anything that uh, you might have learned that you uh, didn't have any inf- information on before, or it brought some clarity to to both of you. For me, it solidified the the Bob Lazar story for me as being real uh, and and true, and so that that so- helped me solidify it in that way. You know, I think that was more when I went into discussion to go, I've known this story for years and it was never publicized and it was just always kind of talked about in the community. So meeting him and him being, you know, a journalist and a filmmaker and wanting to shed light on it, my thing was to go, is this true? And and, and do I believe you? Do I feel that I believe you? And, and when I left, I went, yeah, I believe you. I believe you. And I believe George Knapp. And we actually met George Knapp quickly, yeah. uh, too, because he was he was there as well, too. So I, I believe them. I believe them. And I believe as long as George Knapp has been pushing this story for so long and like disappeared as well, too, and it's kind of come back. You know, I, I, I feel that there's a there's truth there. And that gave me some reassurance, too, in, in yeah. that form. Yeah, what, but uh, Marie, you might have learned a lot more just because you're not always well, following the UFO story. Yeah, the well, I learned about disclosure first off. That was like the big thing in the show that that came to my awareness. I also learned. I just learned a lot. I mean, the whole thing was learning for me. I learned about the increase of sightings and reports of of encounters um, with aliens and UFOs within Canada. And how it's been spiking and it's it's like the number is insane it's like one in it's now one in five canadians are likely to see a ufo in their lifetime which i think is mind-boggling into itself um but talking about really solidifying the the bob lazar story yeah i would say that but it wasn't actually it was from was it from jeremy it was after the interview and george knapp briefly came in the room and I didn't know what I was expecting, but he's such a no nonsense, very straightforward, stoic kind of guy that I was like, there's not, these people have nothing to gain from fabricating any of this information. Absolutely nothing. Um, so Jeremy is a character, which I love him for. And he's the personality and the creative spirit and the drive and the, the will to create these stories and create those documentaries of which I enjoy. Um, but it was meeting George Knapp and really having that weight of his presence and saying, okay, no, this dude has nothing to gain by pushing a story or telling the story or connecting Jeremy with, with Bob. It truly is. It's, it's a true story. So that's when I felt like there's some, there's, it's true. It's real. Like I just, I, mean, I can't deny it. Yeah. It's funny that uh, I, I'm, I'm listening to you guys, but at the same time I've been seeing Marie uh, you've been in the live chat chatting with the the guys that are on there live at the same time. So. Yeah, they're fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, Marie is nice. hilarious. I love you, Marie. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> well, it's it's fun. It turns out that that Pucky OI was lived in Nova Scotia. I'm learning so much stuff. Uh, Green Man has taught me that men in black are. I always just thought they were enforcers. Uh, that there was just guys like because whenever it was the alien stories and the abductions and people are coming out with stories like in the early part of the 20th century that I always assumed that 
the government would have this I, maybe I'm making it up this this like mafia esque enforcer group that would go out and intimidate people so they wouldn't share their stories and so that the government was able to keep things unwrapped. That's what I always thought men in black were. But Green Man is telling me that they actually are, are aliens that wear makeup and walk among us. Um, I'm learning so many things here. This is great. <laughs> yeah, we have a really great men in black story in Niagara Falls, apparently, and there's footage of it as well, too. Have you heard of this no. one, Mandy? Yeah, oh, actually, I have. Yeah. Uh, the guys that yeah, walk into the hotel. Yeah. yeah, it's true. And they have, I'll send it to you, Marie. And they, they are two guys literally wearing suits. And, they, and like it looks like men in black. And they've walked in. But you're only kind of getting this bird's eye view of it. But they did interview and ask the, the receptionists and people that were working at the front desk. And they said they were petrified. That they were scary. They didn't look very human like they kind of did. But it was very weird. And they went in because there was a UFO sighting in Niagara Falls. And they went in and asked people like what they were seeing and or documenting. Um, who knows if someone was playing a trick, but it was. They said that they these people didn't look real and they were really scared. So, yeah, there's there's that's the the most known men in black case that I think we have in Canada, especially Niagara Falls. Yeah, that was a freaky looking uh, couple of guys there. So here's yeah. a question. So yeah, it's fun and fantastic to know that you guys are so open to the conversation of UFOs and uh, even the paranormal also. But uh, what's next for you guys as far as uh, as far as the podcast? Yes, keep producing. We want to we want to start getting into bigger topics, heavier topics. As the season is going on, we've got some really great shows that are coming out a little later. The next one we're going to be talking about astrology with Dr. Jennifer Freed, who's a psychological astrologer, which I think is an interesting pairing of those two worlds. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, we've talked about this briefly before in the past was we really want to start getting into the darker side of what's driving pop culture. So where what is it that creates pop culture? Where is it coming from? What are the alternative sub and countercultures that are driving it? And it's not always really fun stories. Some of it comes with like cultural appropriation or racism or on the backs of other people. Like there's there's more to it. And so we want to kind of start exploring more of the tensor topics relating to pop culture. And obviously, I would love to do more. I personally think we, we need to do like a paranormal show, but we just haven't been able to figure out like the actual sink or the angle. So the mm-hmm. sink being that element from the subculture, counterculture, alternative culture, and where it syncs up with pop culture. So sometimes I think of it as the watershed moment. So like Bob Lazar um, talking on the news in 1989, that's kind of a turning point. Um, I've used twerking as an example. It's like a lot lighter. Uh, Miley, nobody knew what it was until Miley started, Cyrus did it on MTV. But it's a very, um, it bizarrely has persisted even, anyway, I'll save it for the twerking episode. But regardless, <laughs> Miley Cyrus did it on my MTV and everybody knew what it was afterwards. So there are these moments that begin to sync up that help drive it into pop culture. But it's yeah. been happening since the beginning of time. Um, yeah. yeah, like everything's driven from counterculture. You know, it starts as counterculture or as alternative or subculture. And then it really moves into to the mainstream culture. So we were talking about this earlier today saying, you know, counterculture is being created right now as well, too. And that's something that Marie and I haven't talked about mainly. Like we shows have been about, you know, Me Too or, you know, the women's right liberation that's happened that now we have the Me Too movement and things like that. You know, cannabis is another one. There was like the war on drugs and huge cannabis conversation. And now cannabis is legal in many different countries and it's legal in Canada and it's yeah. legal in, in certain parts of the state. So You know, there, but now there are things like, for example, COVID, you know, we're having conversations of human rights. Human rights is a a counterculture topic. And for sure, it's a major, it's a huge one for all of us around the world. But right now, COVID is that because there's something that's happening where a lot of people are losing their rights. It's happening in China, you know, at different parts of not being able to do certain things and having government control and losing a little bit of civil rights based on COVID. So, we're going to see and people are protesting so after covid we're going to see you know how things change when it comes to civil rights how laws are going to be changed you know um what's going to what's going to happen next so 
we haven't really dived into the present counterculture, which one day hopefully we will as well. And then we'll get to look back and go, wow, like that's where we are now. If we get to do the show for longer than 10 years, here's open. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, but that, that really is the counterculture is being made all the time with different groups. And, um, and that's what kind of really evolves us. And then at some point in time, there is a catalyst that people go, Hey, and they just accept it like UFOs. Yeah, you know, and that's a hope, right? That uh, we can get these two to mesh up some way and uh, really leverage both to get some answers, huh? Yeah, you're just hoping. Well, that's why all of us got to keep podcasting, keep doing what we're doing, because that's what pushes all this, these conversations forward. Yeah. I mean, if you don't talk about it, then <laughs> what's the point? So, it's like you said it at the beginning of the show, it's just talking about all these topics it's, and just normalizing it. The more we say it, the more we speak it, we'll create it. It'll be there. Um, and people aren't going to be so afraid. Just even in our experience on our day-to-day, -day, just going out and talking to people about the show and saying, oh, yeah, our first show um, and advanced technology and Bob Lazar, and we talked with Jeremy Corbell, and hearing people using that as their permission now to share about what they think. They're like, oh, you know, I, I really do think that we're not alone in this world and they go in their whole stories. So it's just nice to be able to have that opportunity. And really at the doing it by examining that we created a mainstream culture. And it's not all like pop music. There is there's bigger things at play. Like we are living through COVID right now and we are all sequestered to our homes, which is insane in itself. But we're we're all being like these good and I am I'm not I'm not somebody who doesn't I'm down for the quarantine. I'm in it. I'm right. a community minded person. But at the same time I get like we're all sitting here being like, Yes, government, tell us what to do. And there's a part of me that's thinking, what else is going on out there? Like, is this creating is this creating a culture where we now are <sighs> complacent or that we are turning into more sheep? like culture to just do what we're being told to do and and just blindly trust and does this mean like i mean when is when is covid gonna lift i mean for a long time we were talking about what it, what martial law would look like and how they would implement it and what does that mean for our day-to-day -day lives and how will we recover as a society after we go through something like that so i mean pop culture isn't just pop culture just isn't just pop music and movies there's there's a lot that goes into it that helps develop it as a culture right. um and we're we're living through it right now i mean like i'm sure you can think of some things that you're probably doing right now that are very different than what you were doing before but yeah there's quite a bit and um i kind of you know, one side of me says yeah i can understand why why people are just going nuts they want to get out they want to make some money, provide for their family and things like that. But at the other end, if you're out there doing your thing and this uh, this virus is still alive and well, uh, you may not be, uh, you know, in yep. a few weeks. Yeah, it's yeah. very true. That's it's true. true. I mean, we've I'll... never experienced this before with this type of technology and everything else. We've gone through, you know, epidemics and things like that, but, but not to this degree and, and a source of communication as well, too. So I think that's our benefit, obviously, on, on the other end, is that we have way more technology than we did 100 years ago with, like, the Spanish flu and stuff like that. But, you know, we just don't know what it's going to look like next when it comes to our economy and everybody's economies around the world. Exactly, yeah. So, that, yeah. yeah. And I, and I, you know, I think everybody has these hypotheses of what's going to happen and, you know, what it's going to look like. We don't really know until we get into it. And I don't even know when that's going to start. Like, it's starting now, obviously, but when are we really going to see the full repercussions? Is it going to be in, in six months? Is it going to be in two months? Is it, you know, when is that going to happen? Because I think all of us are just kind of waiting. And that the uncertainty is really what is what what makes me a little bit more uncomfortable, for sure. Yeah, what comes next? What what's the future? And really, uh, one of the thoughts that I got is, imagine us now. Uh, here is a a a, uh, a virus in our on our own planet. Imagine the guys that are going to suit up, and in a few years are going to be visiting other planets in the solar system and things like that. 
it really brings to mind how fragile a species we are. Yeah. 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 And if, if we're going to Mars, like, <laughs> it's so true. And if we're, like, it's, it's very, very true. I haven't even thought about that, to be honest. Yeah, it's very true. If we're traveling around the solar system, we're looking to, you know, if a little, you know, not compared to SARS and everything else, this is COVID still extremely bad, but it could be worse that we could have as a, as a real epidemic as well, too. But if we can't, get through this together and, and push through it together in a, in a way, then yeah, how are we going to travel around the solar system? Right. Jeez. Right. <laughs> well, you have to be so careful, just so careful traveling because you don't want to, I mean, that's, we just have to be aware that we could be infecting, you know, we could be infecting people inadvertently. We are, we are living beings and, we sick, get sick with viruses and we heal from viruses and we spread them. You know, we don't want to be, I don't want to be the planet that's responsible for spreading illness all around the universe. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, so by the way, Marie, was- Marie just posted something in the live chat there that uh, might make you popular with the guys. Oh, really? That I used to grow weed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like, big thing um my ex and i had built a just for a fun project i actually found the cannabis grow bible that we had contributed to um for fun we wanted to try and hack an ikea cabinet to mm-hmm. try and see whether or not we could have a fully operational grow that would be producing about a pound of weed every three weeks <laughs> and wow uh, but at the same time was completely like, if you saw it, you wouldn't know it was a grow cabinet. Um, and we did it. So it had a clone room and a mother in room. Um, we had the filtration on the very top of it. And obviously we had, uh, the cycled growing where we had, and we built it, everything, all of our plants were on a screen of green. So a screen of green is essentially we made bonsai, um, cannabis plants. And it was really fun. And we did that for a few years. And because what we had done, it was just before legalization, but medicinal marijuana was very much okay. And so there was publications that were being published where they were teaching people how to have grows in their home. Because if you had the medicinal license at the time, then you were able to grow, I think, two plants for your own personal use, but no Mm more. Um. So we started to work with a publisher called Green Candy Press. So it's really funny because those pictures that I took are still popping up in books right now. There's pictures of my cat. (laughs) Yeah, my cat was, it was hanging out with the weed one day and I took pictures of her with all the plants and I submitted that and she pops up in grow books and it's really, really funny. So if you see a book and it says Zoe Young in it, that's me. Um. So don't be surprised if you get messages for uh, schematics of your... I know, right? <laughs> Happy to share. Happy to share. It really was not that tough. It just You got to take some a lot of time, have a good Dremel, uh, a good saw, and and just some, some time and some spray paint, and away you go. But, I mean, technology now is, like, way better. I mean, what is available now to grow is just didn't exist back when I was doing it. Uh, which is surprising because it wasn't really, it was like 10 years ago when I did it, which isn't really all that long uh, considering how far we've come as a society from going from it not being legal to being it legal in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weed. It's a great plant. I yeah, don't smoke it go. though, but I and, love uh, it. It looks know. like most of the guys would agree with you. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> they should get it. It's good for you, you know? Blaze that weed that grew on King Solomon's grave. <laughs> that is hilarious. Well, you guys have been fantastic guests. Um, any last words that you want to share um, about the show, about upcoming events, and um, where everyone can find you? Which, by the way, it is in the description of the po- of the podcast today. Um, basically, where we can find Old Pop Repeat and um, Instagram and and all that kind of stuff. But uh, the last word is yours. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, you can find Marie at, I'll just, I'll plug you, Marie, because why not, on Instagram at Karma Cake, K-R-M-A-K-K-E. Uh, and then I'm Miss Vocab, M-I-S-S, 
V-O-C-A-B. We're on Instagram. Shout out to us. We love to talk to people. We like to talk about anything. Marie and I are great at, at having conversations. Um, when people slide into our DMs, that sounds really bad. But <laughs> <laughs> we're open to, to talk to people all the time. And then, yeah, go to allpoprepeat.com uh, to, to follow us. And then you can go to, oh my gosh, Spotify. You can go to iTunes, Google Podcasts. We're, we're all over the place. So even if you just Google all pop repeat. Uh, will pop up so i also posted in the chat because i am in this right now (laughs) awesome it's like manny when's your next show because this is where i'm going to be right (laughs) in the chat room with everybody as a matter of fact uh, it is i just looked at it it's amazing next show saturday it's going to be saturday but it's going to be i'll have a psychic on so you might enjoy that Nice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Let's do this. It's, so it'll be a, have, it'll be a good show. Have you gone to a psychic before? Have I uh, in the past? You know, in my younger years, I had an experience with, with one. Um, unfortunately, they were really accurate, scary accurate. So, yeah, never went back again. Uh, wow, I'm definitely tuning in on Saturday because I don't want to miss you and the psychic. Yeah, he's going to be great. He's a really even killed, nice guy. Uh, people are going to love him. We're going to really find out about him. Uh, but today the show is about you guys, and I thank you for showing up. Um, I'm glad we uh, got this together, and you guys are awesome. You're always welcome back if you want to make any announcements or uh, basically share some of your uh, culture wars with us. Uh, you are always welcome here. Oh, so awesome. kind. Thank you. So, so kind. Thank you, thank you so much. Have- yeah, and, and when we start, we're, Brie and I are looking at some point in time doing like a, a tiny chat or a small chat outside of our larger ones. Um, like in any time in podcasts, like we'd love to have you on too, Manny. So Fantastic. all UFO people accepted and we love to talk to them that are experts in the space. And, you know, there's way more discussions that we can have. Oh, absolutely. I'll be there. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you again for uh, coming in. And uh, guys, if you want to listen to this podcast, please look in the description. The links are in there. Uh, Visit them. Uh, They've got a lot of more shows coming up. And I guess you guys, uh, what is that? The first? um, It's uh, once a month, right? Yeah, it's once a month. Yep. Yeah. Our next episode, we usually get it out. Yeah. So we usually aim for the second Monday of every month. The show comes out. So next one is all about astrology. We're talking about why is that a thing now? Is it a, is it accurate? Is it not accurate? Why do people care about it? And um, yeah, and then we have some. I honestly I can't wait for the edit. Chrissy's been working really hard on the edit of the show, so I can't wait to hear it. Fantastic! Thank you guys again. Uh, this is May Moonraker checking out, and um, what can I say? Ciao. Not the ghost Running through it with the young influence Adolescent presence I'm succumbing to it I've been giving yeses When I shouldn't do it I complete ejection But the moves are loosen And I'm barely moving But I'm still gonna boost them I can't work on winners When I know you're losing So I work the winners And they throw the Guess I have to pivot Shooting the bazookas for the facts I need racks Paper right, right, cash right. Fuck a tax That's a joke Tell them laugh Uncle Sam Fuck out the bag Brody plot But get a whack Contract Give me the max I got lab On my back You ain't that Then it's raps Whoa, 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 whoa. For the record I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable you ain't trying to grow, then it's done for you. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. For the record.
For the right, yeah. For the, for the ragged.